Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing today? Good, good. Uh, it's a pleasure to be your Vice President for Human Space Flight, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, another year of uh, Amateur Radio on the International Space Station, as I'm sure you all will be too. Also looking forward to the uh, symposium coming up, and uh, hope you all can make it. And uh, also remember that the uh, satellite guide that uh, Barry talked about includes Eris. Space Station is a satellite, and it's in there too, so uh, don't forget that. Okay, so I just want, I put this slide up uh, basically to remind everybody that um, we've been doing human spaceflight amateur radio for over 30 years now, um, starting on the shuttle, and uh, we had a really good session at the last uh, symposium with a couple astronauts to talk about a uh, panel session about the 30 years of uh, ham radio. And I wanted to congratulate all of the individuals that have supported uh, all of the human spaceflight activities in the past, uh, volunteered their support as part of uh, AMSAT North America's team. I'd like those individuals to put their hands up. And uh, I hope we can make uh, that, uh, those hands go up for Bob Berniga, you were definitely involved over the years. So uh, uh, hopefully we can get more hands up uh, in the future. I also wanted to recognize our three U.S. sponsors of, uh, of ARIS. Um, that includes NASA, uh, the ARL, and uh, AMSAT. We are all very closely linked and worked very close together to make this happen. Deborah Johnson being our, uh, our prime uh, point of contact at the league, and then uh, Trenisha Dixon at, uh, at uh, NASA. So, you know, Barry kind of mentioned this. I want to spend a couple uh, slides here talking about some of the, uh, the challenges we've had uh, over the past year and a half and what's going on now. Um, we're in a very dynamic environment with ARIS. Um, you know, basically some changes were made um, in the 2010-2012 timeframe, which uh, um, we're in the process of fixing, but uh, they put us on a vulnerable and unsustainable path. Um, we, we got put into uh, what's called ISS National Labs, which usually the partners bring total external funding, which is not something that uh, AMSAT and ARL are, are able to do as nonprofits. And then also, um, uh, they, the NASA liaison moved all of uh, ARIS activities from a dual budget between the program office, the space station office, and education, and exclusively education. And if you look, the budget of uh, the space station program office is three and a half billion dollars a year, and education's a hundred million dollars a year. And um, uh, education's most of their money is earmarked by Congress, so um, any kind of budget cuts they have are are uh, significant. So we're actually working on this part too to try to fix this problem. Um, the other thing, you know, in line with that is the education budget uh, over the past couple of years has been significantly reduced. And actually, uh, especially this year and next year, uh, a lot of their programs have been canceled. Um, the, the education programs uh, within NASA have been kind of decimated, if you will. Um, I will say that uh, our partnerships with NASA and the internationals um, are, are changing, our roles and responsibilities are changing to keep this program sustainable. And I'm, I will tell you, you're gonna see some other things here. I'm still very optimistic we're gonna be uh, in, a, in, a, in a good location, but uh, it's taking a lot of individuals' times to, uh, to, to, to make this uh, a success, or a sustainable program. I think, you know, the bottom line is we've been doing superb in our technical work, our fiscal situation, primarily because of some of the NASA changes that were made uh, a few years ago have been not uh, stellar and we're trying to fix that. The other thing that came up uh, this year is that uh, the NASA Headquarters Education Office uh, has, has held back the JSC Education Office, which uh, provides funding to ARIS. They've, they've had no money since uh, October 2013. They've been kind of running on uh, leftovers and they've told us that there is no funding in fiscal year 15. And like I said, many of the programs have been canceled. So what uh, um, NASA did to prevent the shutdown was to uh, significantly reduce uh, our ops support uh, task with Kenneth Ransom. Um, and uh, only, only schools already in the short queue were uh, being worked at that point. And then Kenneth wasn't able to come, to a, come with us on our ARIS International meeting in Aztec. 
Um, but uh, what I was able to do, of course, you know, I worked in NASA for many, many years. Um, I was able to work with uh, some of the other NASA organizations, in particular in, in the human spaceflight domain. And uh, we were able to garner uh, some funding to um, get us through fiscal year 14, as well as uh, partial for 15. So I think, uh, in my mind, uh, th that's what we need to keep running. And I am convinced that uh, we all will continue to work and get the rest of the fiscal year uh, uh, 15 funding. Uh, for those that don't know NASA's fiscal years, they end at September 30th. And so that, well, I'm talking about anything after October. So uh, all of us, all three of us, AMSAT, ARL, and, and NASA Education are working very aggressively to, uh, to make sure we have adequate funding for 15 and beyond. So, uh, you know, what is our way forward on this? I mean, the most important thing about all of this I underlined is that we, have, uh, that we maintain an outstanding collaborative volunteer team with strong international partnerships. That's what's kept this program alive and it's key to sustaining the program. And so, um, you know, basically what we need to do, you know, AMPSAT, ARL, um, is augment our volunteer team to perform some of the expanded roles we're gonna be taking on with some of the support that uh, has gone away from NASA. Um, myself and uh, some others are working uh, strategic partnerships inside and outside NASA to bring in funding for the program. And um, some of that will be internal uh, funding within NAS NASA as well as uh, external fundraising. And uh, each one of these elements are, are, are crucial if we're going to uh, keep this program alive and sustain and actually to grow. So let me give you a, uh, a, an overview of where we are with the equipment. We've had a really good uh, technical year here. Um, it's very interesting to, to look at the space station and see where we are. You know, the space station, as it's shown in this photograph, is about the size of a football field. So our equipment is uh, in the Russian segment on the bottom of this slide and in the U.S. segment in the European uh, Columbus module. So basically the stations are about a football field away from each other, if you will. We've got uh, four antenna systems on uh, the Zvezda, which is the the uh, Russian service module, as shown, these are prior to installation. And here's uh, some of the pictures um, after they've been installed. You can see the big long antenna on the right, and then a smaller one. We've got three of the smaller ones and the big long uh, uh, 10 meter antenna on the, on the right, HF antenna. In this picture here, uh, you can actually see all four antennas and the big uh, brown WA4 antenna on the, on the uh, top right there. The other thing, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's the, the uh, antennas on the service module in the Russian segment. On the U.S. segment, we've got uh, um, another ante antenna, um, UHF, VHF antenna, as well as some S-band, L-band antennas, and, uh, and a radio equipment in the uh, Columbus module, which you'll see uh, shortly also uh, being operated. And so, uh, you know, we support voice, uh, packet, um, slow scan television as you're all aware. Um, the new thing is uh, ham TV. Oop, interesting. Uh, uh, the new capability is ham TV. Um, we're actually gonna be enhancing our school contacts with this. Uh, we've got a, a tremendously uh, capable um, uh, S-band uh, downlink capability with the ham TV system. Um, and it's a very simple um, system to, to actually build yourself and actually uh, receive some of these downlinks. We, we're encouraging that. You can see some of the ground station antennas, about a 1.2 to 1.5 meter dish will do it. Um, our antennas on the Columbus module are these patch antennas were installed uh, before Columbus uh, was launched. And the little blue thing at the top uh, left is the, uh, is the actual box that the astronauts uh, interface with to turn the uh, system on. And then on the ground, uh, uh, one of the guys, uh, Jean-Pierre in, in, in France, has developed a really cool software program to allow you to, to do uh, uh, operations and actually get the downlink. And um, the picture in the middle is uh, Koichi Wakata on Space Station. Uh, we did a, a, a live uh, commissioning, if you will. We did several commissioning activities, but uh, Koichi's was, uh, was one of the more interesting ones. And I've got a video clip of that that uh, I want to show, see how this works out. 
It's my privilege to proceed to the ham video transmitter's functional commissioning. I feel honored to inaugurate this new amateur radio educational facility, which will enhance space conversations between crew members and students. I congratulate ARIS for this acquisition, and I wish ham video long life and plenty of successful and fascinating school contacts. I have been asked to answer a series of questions, so uh, let's start. First question, is it noisy in Columbus? No, it is uh, very quiet and comfortable to work in Columbus. Second question, is there a constant airflow that one can feel? Yes, uh, we have intramodule and intermodule ventilation and we can feel constant airflow in the ISS. Eleventh question, if you had to show school children or students something special about microgravity, what would you show? Okay, uh, with me I have a, a drink water bag, so I will show you a bubble, water bubble here. Now remember, this is all our stuff. This is not NASA, this is us. In zero gravity, will become a sphere. Here you can see. There's a small air bubble inside of the wall of bottle, water bubble. And I will let it flow and swallow it. Airborne. That's zero gravity. How did you enjoy the demonstration of zero gravity? I am so glad that, that I am talking with you uh, through the hand video. You can continue until the end of the past in about 30 seconds. Okay, copy that. So uh, I have been using the uh, ham radio here in the Columbus module. We have uh, ham radio equipment. I have uh, made uh, probably about uh, 15 school contacts uh, on this flight uh, since November and it was always very uh, delightful to be able to talk with the students. And so what a tremendous engineering achievement. Uh, it, uh, it's pretty phenomenal. We're on S-band and we're doing video from the International Space Station. So, um, you know, you're, here, you're gonna hear different things relative to ham video, and I wanna make sure that uh, from a uh, terminology perspective you understand that uh, we talk about ham video, and that's actually the, uh, the, the di digital ATV um, uh, transmitter, and then you'll hear the term ham TV, and actually that's the full system that allows school children to actually uh, communicate and interact with the, with the astronauts, uh, both the um, the ham TV comprises both the ham video downlink, which you just saw, and that downlink has audio on it. That all of that was from the ham video system, not from UHF. And then uh, we'll have a UHF voice link, and we're not sure how that's all going to work relative to time delays and things like that. But that's uh, something we're going to be doing in the um, in the summertime. Is actually doing a, a uh, uh, experimental school contact with this uh, with this system from an end-to-end -end perspective. And then you can see the, uh, the, the, the frequencies on S-band, um, our symbol rates, you know, uh, and uh, we're doing this all in TSC uh, using a, you know, and, and you can just use a DVB-S uh, receiver to, to, uh, to capture it. Um, the way this is gonna work is that um, uh, the ground stations can get about two to three minutes of digital television based on the antenna patterns and, and, uh, and gains and things like that associated with it. Uh, so we're chaining several stations together to get a full 10-minute pass, if you will. And then uh, all of this is streaming through the uh, BATC.TV uh, uh, server. You can go up there and take a look at some of these videos. Also, the video I just showed was just an excerpt of a, a longer um, a video that's on YouTube that you all can pick up if you just look, look up HAM TV.
Now, this is an eye chart, but the bottom line I wanted to tell you is, you know, we've got a lot of equipment in the uh, service module and the Columbus module. Our um, Columbus module equipment is operational, the, the, the Ericsson VHF system. Um, we're working on the uh, D700s, the Kenwood D700s in the service module, in the Russian service module. Um, those, uh, basically, the uh, program modes were, um, were erased, and so um, uh, we're just operating them in a very simplistic way right now. So it's an intermittent operations that basically the Russians are doing right now. But we're in the middle of uh, reprogramming those radios, uh, both the D700 and then ultimately the D710. The other thing is that the D710 that's up there originally did not have a microphone. There is a microphone now attached, so we can use it on voice operations as well as the D700 on voice. So uh, we're continually uh, uh, fixing and upgrading the system over time here. Still got some work, though, to do on this reprogramming because it's a challenge on the ground to do. It's even bigger challenge when you're trying to do it on orbit. Some of the highlights in 2014 I wanted to bring up was to start with, um, we have a new um, uh, Eris uh, Canada delegate. Uh, AMSAT North America includes Canada, remember, not just the United States. And uh, Stefan Wagner, Steph, Stefan, are you here? Don't see him, but uh, he's replaced uh, Maurice Andre. Stefan uh, came to our meeting at Aztec and has done a wonderful job of uh, stepping in and actually uh, providing leadership not only from Canada, but with uh, the whole uh, international team. He brought up some really good points that uh, we all felt were critical uh, as part of moving forward for Eris. And so we're looking forward to having him uh, uh, more deeply into all of the international activities we're doing on Eris. If you haven't gone to the Eris.org website, uh, please do. It's a new website. Uh, uh, our website was getting really, really old. Um, thanks to the ARL and Deborah Johnson, uh, she spearheaded the whole uh, website development and is keeping it up to date with uh, what's happening operationally and what's happening from a school group perspective uh, and, and making sure the news is in there. So uh, please go to that uh, for information. Uh, we did, uh, we, we've, we've got, since we started the program in two December 2000, we've now done 883 school group contacts, um, um, which is basically 904 schools. Some of our internationals actually uh, do more than one school in a contact in a 10 minute event. And uh, 81 of them this year, 21 countries, 16 states. And this is the, the uh, states and the countries we've uh, supported uh, all across the world. Um, I don't think we're gonna probably uh, do the Ukraine uh, too often in the future here with things that are happening, but uh, we did get Ukraine in last year. Um, this past April, we had a uh, international meeting uh, at ESA Aztec in the Netherlands. Uh, all five of the Eris regions attended, which was phenomenal. Um, it was a tremendous amount of, uh, of sharing of information, of teamwork, collaboration. Uh, we hadn't met in over two years, two and a half years, and this was critically important to, to, uh, to get the relationships uh, back in sync. And uh, we're actually moving out. I'm seeing a lot of things happen since uh, that meeting where, um, uh, you know, a lot of different things uh, relative to hardware, relative to uh, telebridges, webcasting, Spectrum planning and uh, operations uh, are, are uh, occurring right now. This is a absolutely essential piece of us being um, a, you know, a sustained payload on space station. So uh, I really appreciate everybody's support there. The, uh, the hardware activities are interesting because what we're talking about is actually uh, um, trying to make the systems that we fly interoperable and commandable from the ground, which is something we we need so that we can actually um, switch between packet and other things without having the astronauts, having to wait for the astronauts to do stuff for us. So this is something we're working towards the future and I think uh, uh, will be uh, critically important. So from a summary perspective, I want to uh, you know, reiterate that we are in a very dynamic and changing environment and some of the, the, um, the, the issues that have happened within education um, you know, a lot of other organizations, a lot of other programs have been canceled, but we're still alive and moving forward. 
And that's a testament uh, for, you know, to all of the individuals that have volunteered in, in, in AMSAT, ARL, uh, in the United States of uh, their support to the program. And, uh, you know, our, our record of success is, continues to be outstanding and our teamwork, teamwork is outstanding. Uh, you know, our educational events, as I showed, have been phenomenal. Uh, the commissioning of HAM TV has been a tremendous technical achievement for us to do television from space. Um, you know, 10 minutes of television from space, pretty amazing. Um, and uh, we've got some new capabilities, as I mentioned, in the hardware domain that Lou's looking at. Uh, and, uh, uh, and from an educational perspective that E-Mike and others are, are looking at, uh, you know, there's a lot of positives for the future. So we need to remember that and remember that, uh, that it's this outstanding uh, volunteer team and the strong uh, international relationships that actually make this program uh, alive and thrive and, and sustain. So, uh, but to do this, we need to continue getting and augmenting our, our team. And so for that, I'm asking you all, you know, if you are interested in becoming school group mentors, liaisons for press and media, you know, uh, administrative support helpers, you don't have to be technical, although we'd love to have hardware people helping Lou and others. Um, there's a lots of other things you can do, including a major activity that Tim Bosma is doing um, is fundraising. So um, if you're interested in any of that, uh, we are gonna have a get together today uh, we're going to start at the AMSAT booth and maybe move somewhere at 3 o'clock. If you're interested, please come by. And with that, um, I think I'll cut it off and give it back to Alan.